Hello, Yellowtail Tech. Thank you all for being here. We had a good crowd tonight, and we're going to um with well, first off, if you don't know, I'm I'm Rob Coble. I'm the uh career success coach here at Yellowtail. And you know what we do at Yellowtail is all about the success of our graduates. Uh, nothing makes us happier, and I know nothing makes them happier than finding that first gig or that second gig in IT, uh, making those big bucks, and, um, and and you know accomplishing their goals and dreams. And uh, I'm fortunate tonight to have two rock star graduates with us: uh, Sherman Gardner and George Sikolos. Guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, you guys are always so willing to give back to the community, to come and talk to our students and to hang out with us. Uh, it means the world, man. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, thanks for our, having us. Great to be pleasure. here. Yeah, thanks. Why don't we um why don't we start and um we'll we'll uh start with George here and just do a a, a quick introduction. Tell us. Uh, when you graduated from Yellowtail, uh, you know, and started your job search, uh, how long did it take you before you got that first offer? Um, and then what what is your title now? Where do you work? What is your title now? And, uh, of course, we always like to ask, who's your favorite superhero? So, um, George, kick it off, man. Sure. Thanks for having me, guys. Glad you're here. Um I was a student of Yellowtail from January 2022 uh, through basically November of 2022. So, and that includes the uh, program, the uh, internship, and and um, so all that together. What the CERT prep was from like about January to November, and then I began my job search uh, in December, and I was employed on my birthday on March 13th, 2023. And I uh, got uh, a position with a company called Cineverse Technologies, which is basically a, um, a mobile phone company, not a carrier, but a, uh, you know, in telephony. And my job title is a system engineer. And um, my favorite superhero, I, you know, I don't, <laughs> I hope I don't sound too lame. I don't really have one, but if I had to pick one, I guess Batman. He's a, he's a creature of the night. I like that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Batman too, just uh just because. But hey Sherman, how's it going, man? Going well, it's going well. Um so I I I began the journey at Ping, I believe, on in August of 21. Um and went all through uh August of 22. You know, that includes um all my classes, um doing the cert prep and actually taking and passing the exam. Thankfully, on the first time, um, kind of began the job hunt process right after that um, and got my first offer. I believe it was on Christmas Day, right before Christmas in um, of last year. Um, so I started at Ping Identity, which is a software uh, identity and access management company, a uh, global company. Um, my title is Associate Professional Services Consultant. Um, I've been there since January the 9th of this year and thoroughly enjoying it. A lot of learning um, and it's been a great experience thus far. Um, favorite superhero? Um, I would have to say Spider-Man, you know, because uh, I just love all the movies. Um, and I that's the only superhero I actually dress for as Halloween. So <laughs> kind of close to my heart. So Spider-Man. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you guys for being here. And I want to start out um, tonight by um, talking a little bit about education, because one thing that I noticed from both of you and Sherman and I were talking about this uh, when when we uh, first came on. Um, I see, according to LinkedIn, that that your education has not stopped after you left Yellowtail. Both of you seem to be going after uh, various certifications and, and accolades and whatnot. What what gives, man? What is it? Is it passion? Is it a necessity of the job? Tell me a little bit about your journey as you continue on. Yeah, I'll I'll take that on first. Um, so a little bit of all the above. Uh, definitely, 
when you're in the role, you have to continually learn. And um, so it, it, it's definitely part necessity, but of course, there's just an interest in learning, right? There's so many interesting avenues to go in technology, and there's so much more to learn after your formal education that it piques your interest. And, um, and of course, you want to stay up to date uh, with the, the latest technology, which is consistently changing. Um, and, you know, you... you I think I can speak for myself anyway, you know, when you're a career changer, you kind of got like a little chip on your shoulder, right? You got to learn more and prove that you can do this and hold your head above water. So it's like a combination of all those things where you're just motivated. You got something to prove. You want to advance your career and you just love to learn. Nice. Yeah. And Sherman, you were saying that uh, continuing education is actually a perk that you get at your job. Yeah, yeah. So at my job, you know, our environment, uh, it's so awesome where we have something called um, Ping University, um, where you are given the opportunity at your own time. Um, but basically, you know, my first 90 days really involved just a lot of uh, necessary learning. Um, where I had to set up various lab environments. I actually met with someone uh, for one hour every day per week um, where we would go over installation, configuration, um, a lot of uh, the company's um, software that we had to learn, get familiar with, because in my role, we come face-to-face -face with clients. So before that even happens, uh, my first 90 days really involved a lot of in-depth learning. And beyond that, um, in Ping University, you're given the opportunity to obtain badges. Um, so you spend a few hours on, you could do it on your own time, probably on lunch as well. Um, or you can allot time um, during the course of your workday if you have time to actually spend some time learning. And at the end of it, you take a quiz slash exam, and then you obtain a badge that's internal, but can also be added to your resume, could be added to LinkedIn. And it's something you have to show at the end of the entire learning process. So it's an extra motivation to do more. Um, on top of that, you know, for your role, you want to be able to, there will be certain, would be times when, you're on a call and you may hear something that you're not too familiar with. You would go to the documentation and try to learn, read and find out more. So um, it's a combination, just as George said, of, you know, that motivation of wanting to learn. Um, of course, part of it is necessity because now you're in a job. And also throughout the entire time at, uh, at Yellowtail, I think we really learned how to go about that process of obtaining and processing information. So it's just something that continued on all throughout um, the process while at Yellowtail and now going on onto our roles right now that we are a part of. So, you know, I enjoy it. And um, where I am, luckily, there's a bonus at the end of it as well. So that's- Yeah, that's thing. that's a great perk to have, man. I, I tell you, um, uh, it's always nice to know that uh, your company is willing to invest in you and and you know that's that's something that we have here at yellowtail as well which is just awesome um now now that you have have both been out in the, in the workplace for almost a year we'll say now um have you is there a strategy to your choices in the certifications that you're getting and that the the topics that you're studying I guess what I'm asking is, have you been out into the workplace long enough to know where you want to be in the IT world four or five years from now? Or are you still in that gathering information stages and trying to uh, really find your niche or to, you know, find your, your, your true passion? Um, for me, I'm definitely still trying to find the true passion. That's definitely it. However, um, I'm actually working on my um, Azure Fundamentals certification right now. I'm going to be taking it pretty soon. And the reason why that happened, well, number one, I have an interest in going in the cloud, at least for the next couple of years. Five years is too far for me to project. But next year or two, I could see myself going in that route. But the main reason why I got involved in studying for Azure is because my company has taken on an Azure project for the first time and it's, you know, since its existence. So I was like, wow, this is like, an opportunity to grab that certification and be able to become valuable 
uh, to the more valuable to the company and just uh, put myself out there. So that's that. And then, um, you know, I, I think also too, what drives me to learn more and to, to obtain more certifications is to become more well-rounded. Now, now that I have a job, I, I think it's important to get more skills to become more well-rounded. So not only can you add value to your company, but you know, if you're not with that company any longer, you want to be able to be employable and have something on your resume. So it's, for me, it's a combination of those two things. Right on. Yeah. And Sherman, how about you, man? Um, For me and, and the time I've been at Ping, we have, um, you know, so many varying services that we offer to our clients. And, and for me, my focus as of right now is largely associated, associated with the data team. Um, so I spend a lot of my time really trying to get myself familiar with the ins and outs of, of that service. Um, but also along with that and having the foundation of Linux and, and Linux system administration, that really set me up to be able to, you know, have the capacity to venture into many varying fields. Um, and, you know, with the addition of the Ping University within my organization and the time we are, we're given to, okay, I want to learn something on DevOps today. I can actually take a, a badge on DevOps, take maybe five hours in the week and, and you know, do look at some videos, answer some questions, take a test and get a badge on DevOps. Um, so for me, it's more centered at this time, at least it's more centered around really trying to build myself up in this role. Um, but while I'm doing that, I also have the asset of being able to add things to my resume as well, because it, it, it can not only show in my ability to perform and add value to the company right now within this particular role, but, you know, you know, some years down the road, as my supervisor always says, you know, if, if you were to move on from Ping, we want to know that we've made you a better person. Um, you, you are able to learn a lot more and you're able to add value somewhere else if you're That's featured so cool. permanently at Ping. And, and you know, that authenticity that w I hear from w within my company as well is invaluable. So That's yeah. so cool, man. And, um, it, you know, I think the cool thing uh, about the education you received at Yellowtail is, and I think this is true of most good schools in general, is that they teach you how to learn, okay? And especially in tech, we all know that learning is, uh, you know, you're a full-time student now for the rest of your life, and you're you're constantly going to be, you know, in the mix and, and trying to learn new things. Having that, one of the things that I say to students all the time when we're going through the mock interview process is that, you know, when you first go out into the workforce. Yes, you have to have tech skills or you're not going to make it. But the main thing that you need to display is the fact that you have a firm grasp of the foundations of being a Linux system admin, right? And, and once you have that firm grasp, now it's going to be a lot easier to teach you those little ins and outs of the, you know, the little intricacies or the different, the different APIs or tools that you'll be using. So when you first went out and started working, think back to your first couple of weeks. How, how much of your time was spent actually implementing things that you had learned at Yellowtail and how much was spent actually learning new things? And Sherman, you're hot, so I'm going to go with you, man. I'm going to stay with you for right now. And uh, to answer that, probably 90% of what I did uh, circled around uh, my intense background in Linux. Um, because, uh, you know, having the capacity to understand configuration files, having the capacity to know how to update to troubleshoot, to to look into networking, um, to look into ad administration, like every single facet of the things we covered um, throughout the program serves as a huge tool. Ironically, um, when I did my third interview for this role, it was the technical interview. 
um, and also with one of the managers and a, a, a large amount of the questions re questions re re revolved around um, you know everything almost everything we did within um, uh, our second phase of the program um, and so it was enlightening encouraging to know that I can go into this with a bit more confidence um, you know and uh, having to understand how things work how to read how to work through it uh, e even when we we go through um, the where we had to try to research and figure out things on our own and 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 the process of doing that was vital so you know for me most everything that I did probably within the first 90 days outside of being able to apply it to this sp specific software um was vital so and and obviously I could say with ease that you know had I not gone through Yellowtail in this program, I, I most definitely would not have been he, where I am today. That's without a doubt. Yeah, and and George, with the the mock interview process that that you went through at, at Yellowtail, um, do you feel like that was pretty indicative of what you found when you went out there and started interviewing? Yeah, definitely. I'd say for the most part, there were definitely curveballs and in interviews that were completely left field from, from the mock interview process. But, you know, you can't predict everything, you know, that like it's, it, there were, there are roles that like my role is not an administrative role. It's an engineer role. And I work within a soft, uh, I work with a piece of software that I had to learn. And so I was hired at my company and this is good for anyone listening. Um, you know, you don't have to become a Linux systems administrator necessarily coming. There's other opportunities what they liked about me and the background I brought from Yellowtail is my my command of the command line in Red Hat, because a lot of th their servers are are built on Red Hat Linux, and so having knowledge of commands and being comfortable in the command line is what got me the job essentially. Now, in terms of the duties that I do, my my day to day, there actually there's no systems administration at all. It's uh it's completely different. It's uh, to a degree there is. Um, I, I basically manage DNS servers, you know, so there's there's some stuff there, but um, I'm mostly trying to come up with solutions for a, a, um, for companies through a particular software package that we use. But that software package is built on a on a Linux machine. So having that foundation um, in Red Hat has really helped. Um, and it, like back to the mock interview, I think the mock interview is good for me in that it got rid of some of the nerves, I guess mm -hmm. it, it gave me, it set up the expectation of what, cause you know, again, like most people that come to this program, I was a career changer. So in my previous life, I was a teacher and, and interviews were completely different for, uh, you know, interviewing as a teacher. So for 15 years, I was a teacher. So I was used to a completely different world. So had I not had those mock interviews, I would have been caught off guard on my tech interviews because they're a lot more straightforward and dry. I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Slow down. You know, so it was nice to have the mock interviews to prep myself for, I guess, the mentality out there and the way the interviews might go down. It's yeah. interesting that, you know, uh, and, and I say this a lot too. Uh, in fact, I said it earlier today in talking to somebody, you know, putting a resume together and, you know, going on interviews is basically the same no matter what industry you're in, but it's not, okay? <laughs> it's like, that's why we do things a certain way here with, um, uh, you know, with how we put our resumes together and everything. You know, it's based on the industry and what they're looking for. So I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, it is, it, you know, the same principles apply, but there are certain things that people are looking for and you want to make sure that you're presenting them in, in a certain way. So um, I have a couple more questions that I want to ask, but I want to encourage everybody out there to um, use the chat and put your questions in there. Um, I believe we also have a, a, a do we have a hand raise uh, method here on the webinar, uh, Ivy, as well, that they can use if they want to come on and ask a question. Um, yeah. But please, this is all about you. So feel free to raise your hand or put your questions uh, in the thing. 
and um, and then we will get to them. So um, my next question for you before we get over to those guys, um, what do what part of your job is do you think ne- uh, is spent doing research? If you know, one of the things I talked to people that they uh, a great interview we had today, he said um, the the thing that he gained the most from the apprenticeship was his ability to troubleshoot on his own. And I loved that answer. And I know research is a really big part of what you guys do. Uh, how much time do you spend on that? I'll take this first, Charmin, if you don't mind, because right ahead, today, today was the day, man. Like, um, I, it's hard to quantify that like in a day to day, but I'll tell you what, today I was researching from 7 30 AM until about 2 PM on one, <laughs> one issue. Really? Um, and I was yanking did my hair saw, out. Did you get the answer? Yes. Yeah. Um, it, I did have to employ some help. Like I, I had to call, I had to call some lifelines, you know, but Hey, that's the thing. Like you, you want to make sure you're on a good team, you know, because, uh, you can sink or swim there. You know, you, for me, I researched, I got most of what I needed, but there were just a, a couple of things that you just can't know. Like you can't troubleshoot or research it. At, it doesn't matter how much time you put in. There's just certain things you have to be taught. Or someone needs to help you with. So, but you have to at least get yourself 90% there, right? So most of my day was getting myself 90% towards a solution. And that last 10%, I was ready to go nuts and I reached out and someone helped me out. And then I was able to solve the problem. So but let, let me interject. That's a skill too, knowing when it's time to ask. Yes. Okay. Now also in tech, the time to ask is after you've really exhausted your resources. You don't ask on the first. Um, you know, the first issue, like the first, the first bump in the road, you, you try to take that bump and you go until you, until you, it's like, you know, I've asked this question. I've asked that question. I've looked here. I've looked there. I've given people time to respond back to me. I've done this. I've done that. You really exhaust what you're able to do. And at some point you say, okay, I, now I need help. And then when you ask for that help, you present what you've done already. That's very important. You can't just say, what is this? You have to say, here's my issue. Here's what I've done. Here's what I think might be the problem. What do you think? You know, so. Nice. Sherman, do you have anything to add here before I get, I've got some good questions coming in from, uh, from our uh, uh, attendees here. So. I think, I think George kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, I, I think what, what sings well there for me is take initiative, you know? Take initiative, um, try to do as much as research as you can, um, and then, you know, pre- present what you've done. I, I don't need to repeat what he said there, excuse me, <clears throat> what he said there, but um, essentially, you know, for, for me, it's essentially the same thing. You you got to take that time to, um, and, and this falls exactly in line to what we did in the apprenticeship. You know, when we are faced with some issues, they we, they never really wanted to see you just, hey, I don't know how to do A. What do I do? That's yeah. never the way to go. And especially when you're being employed to do a job and you're being paid to do it, you know, for yourself, take that pride in actually taking the time to do some research. This is what I've done. These are the results. This is what worked or did not work. Can you point me in the right direction? Even before asking the answer, can you point me in the right direction? So yeah, I, I think there are a lot of questions out there. So I'll 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 leave it at that for now. Yeah, no, I like that because you know the first question that somebody is going to have is, well, what have you done so far? You exactly. Know, where, where are you at? We got to get some uh, uh, starting point to know what you've already done. So or or you'll get ignored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'll be exactly. crickets. Um. <laughs> So, you know, Ty Edmonds uh, wants to know, you know, what were your thoughts about the apprenticeship? And and George said, tough, but necessary. Um, yeah. What, Sherman, what do you think, man? So what, it's about what are your thoughts on the apprenticeship? Oh, it, it was, it was very tough for me personally. Um, but I think it gave me a measure of discipline, uh, a measure of persistence. Um, consistency that's definitely going to be needed 
in any role that you land. Um, a lot and a lot of times, I clearly remember being up till two, three, couple times four in the morning trying to solve an issue. I don't advise that for everyone, and not everyone <laughs> can do that. That is not always healthy, but I'm stubborn. Um, so it 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 creates and gives you a, a measure of of discipline and uh, repetition that's needed um, because, you know, when you get out into any role that you land, you will need to have that share measure of persistency and discipline. It, it, it's it's going to be mandatory. Um, I think it's, we also had the opportunity to collaborate, which is something that's also going to be present in any role that you have. And, you know, actually taking the time to reach out to your cohort mates or people who have been through this before and learning how to communicate as well. So it really touches on and creates an environment that's very real within any role that you may land. So my encouragement to those who are about to start, who are going through or who will be going through is to, you know, really take it seriously, really put in as much effort as you can, um, but also take the time to write down and document your successes because that's going to keep you going. When you were to, when you are to solve a ticket, make sure you document, this is what I tried. This is what did not work. I can go back right now, literally, and have all the documentation from all my tickets on my process, A, B, C, D, what worked, what didn't work, and can use that for the rest of my life because I saved it on, on one note. So make sure you document everything. Um, and each aspect of, um, of the apprenticeship will be valuable for you in your specific roles. Nice. That's something that most people don't add to their resume is anything about documentation. And I think for those of you listening, if you put something about documentation on your resume to show that you're, when, when you do that, you show that you're aware of the importance of it. And it's a, it shows that you understand what the job's all about. And it, 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 it's just, uh, you know, I, I, I would like to see that more. So that's my pro tip for you guys here. Um, let, me, let, me make, let me make a couple of comments on that really quick yeah. about documentation. That is very important. Don't, don't, um, don't undervalue that. I, I'll give you a quick example. My boss the other day, he, he knew I was a former English teacher. And, I, and I, to me, documentation is the most important thing of the job because like this issue I had today, I'm uh, what I'm going to do tomorrow morning for an hour is I'm going to document it because this thing made me tear my hair out. I don't want this happening to someone in the future. Just think about it. You're you're about to join a company. You want to have a nice knowledge base there. You know, you, it's very frustrating when there's issues and nobody's documented anything. Then it becomes a headache. So think about how good it is for yourself, but also for the people that are following behind you. Not only that, one last comment on documentation, but my boss reached out to me the other day and asked me to document or to be an editor for some of the files he has to send to his bigger boss. So I have, there's value in my, in my background and the fact that I can document. He found value in that and he's, and he's leveraging, leveraging that from me, which makes me valuable. So it's a very important skill. And the last point is uh, Sherman mentioned like keeping a one note or something and tracking your tickets during the um, apprenticeship. A, 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 a good practical reason to do that is you're going to have interviews with the star process, right? I'm sure if you're going to go through the mock interviews with, with Rob, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be, tell me about a problem you had. What did, how, how did you identify it? What did you do to solve it? And then you have all that already. Like you have real, legit, real life tickets that you've solved and you can use that for all your interviews that you go on. So that's all I wanted to mention on documentation. It's nice. super important. Yeah. Yeah. Great point, man. Great point. Um, some of the questions are, we're getting a lot of them in now and they're kind of going, um, what I want to do is while we're talking about the apprenticeship, I'm going to keep the questions that are related to the apprenticeship going here. And then some of the other ones I will get back to. So don't think that I've jumped over uh, you. Um, Mamadou wants to know what strategy did they, and I, by they, I guess he means us, Yellowtail, what strategy did they use after the internship to keep yourself on track before your first offer? I, th I think he means, if, I think he means like um, me and Sherman, like what did we do 
after the internship to keep our yeah, skills. Yeah, okay. Up, maybe, that kind maybe, of thing. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Uh, for me, the, I, I practice the basic commands always. Um, and if you go on my LinkedIn and follow me, I, I recently posted a really cool website where that'll keep you fresh and teach you the basic commands. Um, so just keep those basic commands so you don't forget them. The other thing is keep learning. Like I, I would go on, I'd go on certain YouTube channels, certain websites, and I would, I would just think of a project. Like one project I had is how do I add an SSL certificate to a website? I have never used it in my job and probably never will. But the, the, the idea was I needed to give myself a project and I needed, I needed to get on the computer, the command line and figure it out. And I, I would watch I would watch uh, tutorials. It's not like I just tried to figure everything out. Like I, I got help, you know, but I would say find some mini projects. There's plenty of them online. Just search Linux projects. There's pages and pages on that. And just practice a project a day. Just hop on your command line and and do something. Yeah. Gives you something to talk about in the interview too. Yeah. Um, and on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. So Sherman. This question comes from Ruben Iway. I was wondering, how did you guys prepare for the interviews after the apprenticeship? Any tips? Um, <laughs> well, the tips is to follow and trust the process. Um, I, I think what helped me out significantly was really making sure I studied those um, uh, prep questions that were given. I think you're given an Excel spreadsheet an entire list of questions and answers um, that you can prepare for the interviews. I think once you go over those, look at yourself in the mirror, answer questions, once you're able to um, write down and document and uh, really practice repetition on that about you, tell me about yourself question, that's a key one that everyone will ask. Um, And also be able to translate your experiences from the apprenticeship in everything that you did, every uh, software or configuration that you made and that documentation that we've spoken about, make sure that you can put that in a story. Once you're able to put that in a story, then you're able to talk about it when you're asked that question in an interview. Um, So, you know, what from my experience, not only on the mock interviews, but also on real life interviews, Most of my interviews happened as a conversation. So when you are asked a question, you can, you know, circle it and present it in a way where it's essentially, well, yeah, I did that, um, you know, about two months ago, I was working with Foreman and I did this configuration and it was a lot of fun because we were able to solve this problem. So present it in that way. And that's why, you know, everything ties in the documentation, um, answering those questions and really understanding how it works and then making sure you have a well-rounded and complete answer for that about me or tell me about yourself Mm -hmm. question, which is vitally important and kind of crack open the door to have a really smooth and easygoing interview. Yeah. I'll, I'll add a couple of things on. Um, I want to harp on what Sherman said about the uh, tell me about yourself. Have that down. Make that if you get any interview question correct, that's the one. And you can actually steer the interview that way if you get it done right. You know, you you really need to sell yourself there, you know. So it's take a lot of time on that. And the other piece of advice I would give is find three to four scenarios that things that you've done. Like, like, for example, like these interns, the internship, find three or four tough tickets that you had, right? And th- really think about and write this. I wrote the stuff down, okay? Think about what the problem was. Think about what ca- uh, what caused the problem and your solution and what you learned from it. Those, you know, like that method and write those down as like little paragraphs. Have, what, what I'm trying to say is have three or four real life scenarios in your pocket and you'll find the place to use them in the interview and the about me. So if I had any advice, like the, at the bare minimum about, tell me about yourself, three to four scenarios thought about written down, rehearsed, like, and, and they're in your pocket so that you can feel confident in the interview and you'll find the place to pull those out and speak confidently. So that's, that's something that I did. Done. Great advice. 
Ty has another question, and, and I'm going to go ahead and answer this one um, because we kind of already answered it a little bit earlier, and, and he wants to know like how the personalized coaching and mentoring works. If I were to get stuck on some of the material, would I receive some sort of tutoring? The answer is yes. You know, what, what you give is what you get. But again, it's going to be expected of you to expire all the resources at your that are available to you. So um, if, you know, right now I went to George and Sherman and said, um, you know, I want to learn about containers. You know, the first thing they're going to do is let me Google that for you. Okay. So they're going to want you to go and do as much as you can. But yeah, when you get stuck or, or something like that, um, Remember that the teachers that we have here at Yellowtail all work in the industry or all come from the industry. They've been out there doing it. And, you know, everybody here is going to be available to help you with questions or um, point you in the right direction so that you're going to get the the information that you're looking for. Um Sager wants to know, um, during the apprenticeship, is it recommended to keep a part-time job or give it or, or, or go full-time into the uh, apprenticeship? I had a full-time job and did that. <laughs> <laughs> I no. think that's one of those questions that it's kind of like, you know, it's really up to the individual. What can you handle, you know? If, if, if you have the ability to work part-time or not at all and, and do the internship, God bless you and do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That 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 will be a personal. I mean, that, that will be a question. I I think you will have to answer. If you have the capacity to do it, great. If you don't, it's still very much doable. Um, it may take a lot more work when you have a full time slash part time job. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, you do want to make sure your family and yourself is is taken care of. So, um, I I guess that will be down to the individual answering yeah. that. Way. And Kendra is asking about, um, uh, would you recommend taking the RHCSA before going to your first job? Repeat that question again, Rob. Sorry. Would Would you recommend taking the RHCSA, in other words, getting your certification before going for your first job? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. Not, you're, you're, you're probably won't even get an interview if you don't have it. I hate to say it that way, but you have yeah. to. You have if you're coming from no background. I don't. I don't know what her background is, but I'm assuming it's little tech or no tech. I don't know. Sorry if I'm wrong, but um, if that's the case, you got to show something. You know, like like I said, the reason why I got my job is they saw I had that cert. They're like, we need someone like you who knows Red Hat. So that really helped me out a lot. So for sure, get all the education you can. Take that test right away. I signed up right away. Um, I, I don't know where people are at in their cohort. What I recommend doing is kicking butt in your cohort and participating because I won the MVP and I got my test paid for. So <laughs> I, I took nice. advantage of that and I took that test right away when my internship was over. I was at the at the front of the line and I took it and I passed it on the first try and I got a job. So yes, definitely. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that definitely adds some credibility. And even for those, I know some of you may may come from different backgrounds or may even have degrees, but that certification gives you a measure of credibility that you really cannot place, you know, enough value on. So I would say definitely take the certification, definitely, if you can. Okay, before we switch gears and talk a little bit more about the industry, uh, a question from uh, uh, our friend Greg Gogan, and he wants to know what tips you might be able to offer and how you dealt with the lack of response from employers that you were applying to. We all know you apply to 100 jobs, you're lucky to hear back from 10 or 15 of them, right? Did you guys, how, how did you guys deal with that? Um, what can you do? <laughs> okay. You, all you can do is this. You can, you can have a good resume. Do the, make sure your <laughs> resume looks good. Okay. So look at your resume and say, is this the best it can be right now? If the answer is no, fix that first. Second thing, 
have a good LinkedIn profile. Look at your LinkedIn profile. If it's not up to par, then you can do more and fix that up. Once you've got that down and you've prepared for interviews, like you're ready to go, you're like you're like a, 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 a package ready to be delivered to an employer. At that point, it's a it, remember this, and this was tough for me. It is a numbers game. Really, you I know people who apply to a thousand jobs that before they got their first one. But here's but here's the bottom line. Your job is out there. You will get one. Um, it's a matter of how prepared are you when opportunity knocks. And the, you know, you need to attract these people, the recruiters. So again, being professional on your resume, on your LinkedIn profile, the way you present yourself, the more you can work on that, the more traction you'll get. And then the more traction you get, you start to win the numbers game. So just remember, it's a numbers game. Uh, don't be afraid to take an internal look at yourself and ask yourself if you're doing the right thing or not. Um, if you if you look professional, if you're presenting professional, and if you're looking at yourself and the answer is no, then fix it. You know? And what I mean by that is like your resume, your LinkedIn profile, things like that. So if you're on top of the on top of your game with those things, just sit back and relax in your chair because it's going to be it's going to be a ride. You just apply, apply, apply and tailor your resumes. <clears throat> One thing I always said, the job I got now, the first thing the interviewer said was, wow, you're the first person to put system support engineer on their on their resume. I, and I tell everyone that like if, if whatever your job is, don't just leave it generic as Linux systems administrator. Tailor it, support engineer, application engineer, technician, whatever it is, make sure your resume says that because that's what they're going to see. Yeah, and the cover letter is a great uh, place to really speak to that specific job as well. Um, you you should definitely be adding a cover letter. That's something that we talk about in uh, career success when you get to that point of the uh, apprenticeship as well. Um mm-hmm. Sherman, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? And I I just wanted to hammer home for for those going through the apprenticeship and 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 about to to uh, to touch on Greg's question. You know, as as uh, George said, that LinkedIn and resume being in sync is very key. Um, and you also want to make sure um, you're personalizing your applications to specific. Uh, to specific jobs, and you're not just sending out the same resume um, to every single job. You because you you need to get those keywords in that will allow you to be caught um, out of the thousand resumes that they see. For my particular role right now, really quickly, um, I did not apply for this job. Like go out and find it. A recruiter found me and reached out to me. Um, and that happened only because of my LinkedIn profile. And the resume only came after the screen call, well, right before the screening call that they gave me. So 100% my current role is because of my LinkedIn resume. So you want to make sure that that LinkedIn resume is up to par. It syncs with your LinkedIn profile is up to par. It syncs with your resume. Um, always continuously be ready. Um, practice your interviewing and stay on the command line. Um, and, and also, as we said, go through your documentation and all, always make sure you're able to, as George said, which is great, have the, those four or five key things that you can talk about or give a story um, when asked questions on the interview. So um, those, th- those are the things what, that worked for me during the process. That's gold, man. This is just gold level advice right there. I'm going to switch gears now and and jump back. Um, We have a question, and I don't know if I'm going to be pronouncing your name right. Charday, Shardy. I'm going to think that it's probably Charday. But anyway, her question was, what direction do you see technology going in the future, and how vital is Linux in that direction? That's a a good – there's a lot to unpack there probably, but – yeah. I, I think technology is, I mean, it's a big question. It's a broad question. So just kind of a high level, it's go, It's going towards automation, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's, it's it, the, the question that technologists are asking is, how can we make life easier? How can we get things to run quickly, smoothly, with less hands involved? This is just my opinion, by the way, based off what I see out there. And so whatever that looks like in terms of technology, the, the I think Linux will be very vital in that direction. I think it's going to be 
having the Linux skills will be the most vital um, um, cornerstone or or building block to move you in those directions. So no, no matter where technology is going in the future, I would say that you have to have Linux. I mean, I, 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 that's the way I'm going to... Windows is great. All the other operating systems are great. They have their place and they, and they serve big purposes, but Linux will always be vital and will always be the place where these technologies are built upon. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll second and add, add to that. Cloud automation and scaling. You know, you want to do a lot faster and have it done well. And having that Linux foundation is invaluable. You will be able to find a role and, and not only that, have the capacity to venture off into different things um, based on having that Linux foundation. So I think it's one of those skills that, you know, once you have it, you it opens up so many doors for you. Um, so, you know, for me and, and where I am now, I can have my pick of the lot of the direction I go in, um, you know, when I feel that the time is right to either go left or right. So nice. um, that's that's my opinion on it. That, okay, cool. Good. Mm-hmm. I like it. Um, so there's a lot of people right now that are a little shy about busting in or, 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 or investing their time into going into the tech industry. You know, they're saying um, you read the news and they talk about tech layoffs and everything. And I find it pretty interesting because, you know, when they talk about tech layoffs, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, the, the system admins are getting laid off. It means that, you know, Google laid off all these people and, you know, because it's a tech company, it's called the tech layoff. And that means that, you know, half of their administration and their recruiting team and, um, you know, the guy that leads the tours around the campus might have gotten laid off. Sure, there's going to be some layoffs involved in technology. And just like there's going to be layoffs in any industry um, that that people go into. So, you know, with with technology and kind of following up on that last question, you know, what are your what are your comments or thoughts on that? You know, if somebody's shy about getting into technology because uh, they hear about these layoffs and everything. Can, can I jump on that? Like, yeah, please. For me, it's it's it, it, it's just I have the, the personal opinion of just do it. Just do it. If you have the the drive and the will to be successful, it's it's a it's a feel that you think you can be passionate about. Um, and uh, this is a I'm not gonna lie, this is a motivating factor for a lot of people. It pays well. Um, it pays well. So if you want to have that capacity to provide for your family and and build a future for your family, um. It's one thing to hear about these tech layoff, but if if there's one thing that will never be able to be taken away from you is that education, um, that learning, because everything you do uh, throughout Yellowtail and any learning process that you take will be transferable. You can take it to job A, job B, job C, and so on and so forth. So um, I think. In, uh, I want to encourage anyone and everyone to invest in yourself um, and invest in yourself not only takes sometimes some money, um, it also takes time and it also takes sacrifice from yourself and from your family. So I think if you can tune all these things together and have that capacity and willingness to really dig deep and be consistent with it, uh, um, I think nothing but a bright future is in your is a, is ahead of you. So um, for me, it's it's just a matter of if this is what you want to do, just do it. Put things in place where you can make it happen. And trust me, you can hear about all the layoffs that happens. You will have a job, and you will be able to find a job, even if you were to lose one. So for me, honestly, that's not even something I'm worried about because I know what I'm doing right now can be taken somewhere else in the event that it, it has to be so nice i'll add a couple of things to this too because it is something i think about like you know uh, i and i've seen it before but here's the thing you got to think about 
just go on LinkedIn to the job section and look at how many tech jobs there are. Mm-hmm. And compare that to the number of layoffs. And there's 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 probably I don't have the exact figures, but there's probably a surplus of jobs versus people losing their jobs, right? That's one thing to keep in mind. So there's the, the the ratio to jobs to layoffs is probably in favor of you having a job, number one. Number two, what what industry doesn't have layoffs or let people go for one reason or the other? Now, you might be in a safe industry, but what does it pay? So these are the things you have to think about. You know, um, if, if for me, uh, I, I literally get paid double what I got paid as a teacher and I work from home. Like there's my horrible home setup right now. Don't look at it. But, um, you know, so if I got laid off tomorrow, it would not be fun. Don't get me wrong. But it wasn't fun making thirty five thousand dollars a year either. You know, and and so for me is that's a very temperamental thing. Like the the whole idea of getting laid off is very um, just you, you need to look past it because could it happen? Yes. But can you get it over that quickly? Yes, absolutely. It's It's a small road bump to clear, to get to your goals and get to where you want to be. Yeah. I, I look back at my career and the, the, you know, the biggest, the biggest thing that I tell anybody when I'm talking about careers and everything is when, if at all possible, do something you love, you know, you've heard the old saying, you know, get a job you love and you never work a day in your life. Well, I don't know if that's true or not, because, you know, sure, we all have bad days and everything. But, you know, I've I've been working and supporting myself for a long time, and I've been fortunate to to have jobs, you know, my my career to do things that I love. You know, I got to work in the music business. I get to work in tech. I get to work with all of y'all, you know, on a regular basis. I love what I do. And it makes it a lot easier to get up and come to work every morning. You know, I don't have any problem getting out of bed in the morning, knowing that I have to go to work. And I want everybody out there to be able to say the same thing, you know? Um, Sure. There's, I've, I've worked at places where there's been a lot, where there's been layoffs. Um, There's, uh, there's, there's been places I've worked where I've been laid off. You know, so it does happen. But at the same time, if you're doing something that you love, if you're doing something that you're passionate about, uh, you're going to have a lot more good days than bad days. And um, and I think that's really important. So we got just a few minutes left here to um, kind of uh, throw out any last minute tidbits, words of advice. uh you know what whatever i'm going to open the floor to you guys and let you talk about whatever you like and let's go ahead and start with george yeah i would say that uh, if you're in the program or you're considering the program it is a, a a worthwhile investment in yourself that will pay off dividends in the end because you will get a job and and the one and the one piece of advice i would say is because it, there are times where this gets tough um, there are hours you put in, there's feelings of uncertainty a, a lot of the times, but you always have to go back and ask yourself why you're doing it. You know, for me, it was a, a life change for myself and my family. That was it. it. It wasn't a, you know, it really wasn't about me and the way I was feeling in the moment. It, you know, it was about what, how, what kind of legacy am I going to leave behind? You know, what am I going to do for my family? What, why do I want to change the course of everything and go into this program? Yellowtail did that. It's, it's, it's given me the skills I need to work a career where I'm home with my kids. I make good money. And now I can make those goals I've had before into realities down the road. I can do things for my family. So in those moments where it's discouraging or you hear about layoffs or the internship is hard or, you're not getting calls back from employers. All those things just suck. Don't get me wrong. And we've all been through it. But you got to remember, all that will pass in a relatively short amount of time. Hmm. And then you'll be where you want it to be and, and, and taking care of your family or whatever your goals were. Just remember that and stay motivated. Yeah. And, and, and to answer that question for me, um, 
my motivating factor was really just beginning with the end in mind. I knew where I wanted to be a year from or two years from the beginning of the program. And uh, that really drove me forward um, into, into wanting to make an instant change. If you're happy with where you're at right now and you're happy with seeing yourself there for the next year or two years, um, that's fine. But if you're willing to really sac- make some sacrifices, put in some work, um, and you have a plan or a vision of what where you want to be in the next two years or a year and a half or, um, you know, I really, really think this program is excellent. Um, as, as George said, I have no doubt that you will get a job if you put in the work. Um, and it will be something like for me, I'm, I'm proud of myself for what I've accomplished over the past 18 months, probably a little less than 18 months. Um, my family's proud of me. And I can safely say right now that I have set an example um, of, you know, achieving a dream of, you know, doing something I love, being able to provide for my family, and also having some skills right now that I can not only impart upon, you know, people like you, but also to my kids and those around my circle as well. So I am uh, thoroughly blessed to be here. I am excited to continuously be involved in the Yellowtail family. And I would say, you know, if, if this is something that you you know, you can see yourself doing, just take that jump and take that leap of faith. And, and, and trust me, you will not be disappointed. So thank you, man. You you guys are like level Jay-Z rock stars. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting you like way up here. Okay. I, uh, I really can't thank you enough for, you know, again, coming back and, and spending time with us, man. When I, when I ask, uh, when I ask our alumni community for uh, people that might be interested, you guys are always the first to chime in. Uh, you know, your your success is, is well-deserved, and it seriously really, really appreciate all that you do for our community. So um, with that, anything I could do for you in the future, you know where to find me. And that goes for anybody else out there. If you are a Yellowtail uh, student currently enrolled in the Yellowtail program, I'm easy to find on Slack. Uh, If you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me via email if you're not on Slack, and that's just rob at yellowtail.tech. Ivy has also put a link up for anybody that is out there that might be interested in learning more about our programs or anything like that. Um, you can easily book a 10 minute intro call with one of our, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, enrollment advisors. Uh, the, the link is up in the chat right now, but you'll easily find that on our website as well. And, um, yeah, feel free to go. You know, if you're interested in in having a career in tech, uh, you owe it to yourself to at least investigate and find out, you know, what, what it's all about. And I think these guys and anybody else will tell you, it might not be easy. You know, it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of studying. There's going to be a lot of uh, uh, banging your head against the wall a little bit as you're trying to figure things out. But once you do, uh, you're going to be doing something that you love doing. You're going to be in a career that uh, that you're, uh, like me, you're happy to get up and go to work every morning. So, again, thank you, guys. And thank you, Yana and Ivy, for getting us all set up for the webinar. Um, everybody, uh, this episode will come out. Uh, again, we'll we'll set it up as a podcast. We'll have the video up once we're able to do some editing and all of that kind of stuff, too. So thank you all for joining. Um, I'm going to let you guys go back to your families and get some dinner. And uh, I will talk to everybody real soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Sherman. Bye, Rob. Thanks.